we will call this meeting order. Current Council of Governments Transportation Planning Policy Committee, Thursday, September 19th, 6.30 p.m. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Salute the Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. I own. Present. Skip Gorman. Carr. Present. Couch. Here. Crichton. Here. Crump. Here. Flores. Cryer. Navarro. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Yes. Reyes. Reina. I'm here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Vasquez. And Warney. Warney's on the phone. <laughs> or I mean he's on the computer, but he can't he can't vote because he's not here. And it's not posted. Sorry. No, we have a quorum. But we have a quorum. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making presentation are there any public comments yes sir evening everybody so evening. I'm Jay with bike Bakersfield um, I've got a few things to update you guys on uh, this October we've got a lot planned um, here in bike Bakersfield on October 12th we'll be offering a bike maintenance clinic over at North River, north of the Rivers Fall Festival and on the 30th we'll be joining the wonderful uh, Academy for their harvest fall, harvest fest in Lost Hills Rideshare Week is coming up. It's Friday, October 11th, so we will be hosting commuter bike stands over by Cal State, essentially on the bike trail by finish line, as well as the entry um, by Beach Park. Uh, we'll be offering snacks and refreshments for anybody who's commuting on the bike path or anybody out there in the morning getting their run in or workout in. Um, towards the end of the month, we'll be kicking off Project Light Up the Night, um, distributing bike lights in East Bakersfield, Oildale, um, we plan on expanding it for Delano and Wasco. Right now, we're at the Kern County Fair gathering feedback for the HP project with Kern Cog. And as always, we'll continue to com continue our community rides across all 13 communities we serve. Great. Thank you, Jake. Mr. Right. Smith, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, you, right here, um, you mentioned Delano and Wasco, but you didn't mention McFarland. We will, in, if I can, we will be including McFarland. Uh, actually, we'll be out there this Saturday with the Mujeres. The oh, the activas. community garden? Yeah. Yes, yes, the community garden. Yeah, thank you. Um, and we will include them in our, uh, by, uh, our light giveaway. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Any other questions? Thank you, Jay. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Same rules any public comments on consent agenda <clears throat> saying none does any member wish to pull any item off consent agenda for a separate consideration motion to approve second, second. <laughs> roll call vote please turn my mic on i own aye Car. Aye. Couch. Here. Crichton. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I marked it yes. <laughs> Crichton. Yes. Crump. Yes. Uh, Para. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, public hearing, unmet transit needs in Kern County. Ms. Enriquez. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, this is current Council of Government's annual public hearing on unmet transit needs. The purpose is to identify transit needs and determine those that are reasonable to meet before allocating Transportation Development Act funds to non-transit uses. Current COG must identify unmet transit needs per California Public Utilities Code Section 9940.1.5. Public input was gathered through newspaper ads and 12 public hearings in the cities and the rural communities and Golden Empire Transit District. Uh, GET held their uh, public hearing in February of 2024, and there were no unmet transit needs deemed reasonable to meet. Kern Transit and the cities of Arvin, Cal City, Delano, Maricopa, McFarland, Ridgecrest, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Moscow held their meetings between February and May of 2024 with no um, unmet transit needs that were deemed reasonable to meet. Uh, the SS tag reviewed the analysis provided by Kern Cox staff on August 14th, and tonight is the last of the public hearings for the fiscal year 2024, 2024-25 unmet transit needs assessment, and at which point a determination to decide through resolution one of the following. There are no unmet transit needs. Two, there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. Or three, there are no unmet transit needs, including those that are reasonable to meet. At this time, I ask Mr. Chairman to open the public hearing, receive comments, and close the public hearing. Thank you. I will open the public hearing. Any comments on unmet <coughs> transit needs? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Okay. Staff and the, um, and the members of the um, Social Services um, Transportation Advisory Committee recommend a finding that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet in Kern County and authorize the chair to sign resolution number 2428. Thank you. Can I have a motion for the finding? Second. Roll call vote, please. Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Para. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Crump. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Couch. Just a yes. Just a yes. <laughs> and I own. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report, District 9, please. Good evening. All right, I'm going to start um, reporting on projects that have ongoing traffic impacts in East Kern. First of all, there's the Kern Lighting Project, and uh, it's the updating lighting on uh, State Route 58 at the Tehachapi Boulevard overpass, and the construction has begun on this project. Second, the China Lake Water Main Replacement. This is happening on State Route 178 East between North Brady, Brady Street and North Victor Street. Uh, the westbound outside lane is closed while crews replace a water main Monday through Friday, you know, 6 to 4. And uh, the outside lane will, re will reopen after work hours and the shoulder will close at night. Third is the Highway 58 to Hatchapi Safety Median Devices Project, and this is projected to be completed in October. Uh, on, it's located on uh, 58 at the State Road 202 Tucker Road overpass in Tehachapi. The shoulders will close in both directions while crews repair and upgrade guardrail, and work is scheduled again Monday through Friday. Uh, Fourth is the uh, Mojave sidewalk construction on State Route 14 from the Oak Creek Road overcrossing to just north of the LA Department of Water and Power office in Mojave. The northbound outside lane and shoulder are closed while crews uh, construct a sidewalk. And again, uh, work is, is scheduled Monday through Friday. And uh, for those that uh, might be traveling on US 395 on the other side of the mountains, uh, the U.S. 395 closure at Sonora Junction has been extended to September 21st uh, due to weather impacts. It's just too cold to handle the asphalt. And uh, if, you're, if you are traveling in that area, there is a detour map on the district website. And then 
upcoming projects. Um, the Kern 58 Digouts project. And we're, construction is set to begin next week on this maintenance project. There will be single lane closures where work is happening, which is uh, sort of the Mojave area east of Tehachapi. And uh, the project is anticipated to complete construction by the end of October. For early project work, very early project work, uh, environmental surveys have begun for two projects. First, the Freeman Gulch Safety Project and the Rosamond Rehab 2. So this is a section of 14 that is uh, south of the, the last rehab project on 14. It's a much shorter distance. Finally, um, a public announcement, Caltrans launched a new Slow Down in Town campaign at the end of August that aims to increase safe driving by reminding drivers to decrease speeds on all highways that intersect small towns. So for East Kern, this would include State Route 202 through Tehachapi, as well as State Route 178 through Inyo Kern and Ridgecrest. And this campaign will run uh, throughout September. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Just Smith. a comment. Uh, I had brought up the uh, Tashby Woodford Road and 202 uh, drainage issue that we had, and you might have an update for me. I noticed a lot of work being done. So. Yes, we are working on it. Um, they, uh, I checked in with the engineers, the East Kern engineers, and uh, I think they're working on the design because there's no actual, um, uh, there's no drainage at that corner. So they've really had to start from scratch, but I think they've, they've at least cleared the, the area around the corner while they're working on the design uh, so that you can access it and, and it's improved the drainage as best as they can. I guess Thank the you. drainage to cross uh, 202 is several hundred yard or a hundred yards yeah. or something to the east so it's got to come down and then go east and then yeah. go under so it's a little bit of a challenge it's but not trivial yeah so anyway i just wanted to say thank you for the effort and the work oh, and thank just you keep us updated <laughs> thank you very much thank you any other questions mr chairman i, uh, I have a question yes Ka catherine is that slow down in town a district nine thing or is that a statewide issue it's a caltrans um no program yeah okay because there, there are many other towns on state highways on in the district six side too thank you any other questions for district nine yes. Seeing none mr navarro thank you mr chair good evening members of the commission um i was excited a lot of great stuff to share today you cut maybe go second that's fine no so uh been in bakersfield all day today um we had Probably the first I've attended, which we had an art unveiling, ribbon cutting, and groundbreaking all in one today over there at Garcia Circle. So um, if you get a chance to drive by there by Garcia Circle, you'll see the columns and the murals painted up there. We also did mural work on the undercrossing at 99 in um, California, the south side where the pedestrians walk. You'll see that whole undercrossing it has a mural on it. And so that was the art unveiling component. Um, the groundbreaking was actually for the Union Avenue for the road diet project. Oh, so, so that's starting activity. Um, I believe they're estimating about 80 working days. So you have the road diet and the class four bike lanes incorporated in that project. So really excited about that. A um, couple other projects for Clean California. So City of Arvin, we, you've heard us field questions about how long it's taken to get the, the tree, tree planting out there. They did actually start planting trees this week in the areas where the irrigation has been addressed. So they expect to have the Arvin um, Clean California project done by the end of next month. Um, at that point, we'll do some kind of a, a press release out there in, in, in the field. Um, also next week, or actually not next week, but October 10th, they'll be doing the ribbon cutting for the Clean California Local Grant Project uh, for Heritage Park. So that project is wrapping up. And let's see, yeah, that's it for the Clean California projects. Um, we did start kickoff activities on, you've heard us talk about the State Route 99 58 ramp connector, that eighth and final movement. So we did a kickoff meeting with, with Kern Cog staff. So in anticipation of this month of the call for projects for the SB1 trade corridor enhancement project, uh, projects will be uh, working jointly on application for that. Uh, in terms of projects, so State Route 46 and State Route 43 intersection improvements, that's the roundabout project. Uh, that product's still in design. Anticipate that going out next spring. The State Route 99, uh, to Westbound 58 ramp connector project. 
So that's going to go to CTC this October for the right of way allocation. Um, the State Route 43 Santa Fe roundabout, that's in the design phase. So we anticipate having design complete on that project uh, this December. They'll be going through Federal Lands Bureau recommendation for the uh, for permits. So that'll delay construction to spring of 2026. Out on Kern 58, uh, we have a rehab project in the westbound State Route 58 from uh, near Edison from about two miles west of Tohon Highway to the overcrossing at Caliente Creek. Um, that project was awarded Griffith Company. Uh, picked that project to be complete November of 2024. I think the second we've talked about in the past. And you had mentioned there is actually a follow-up project we're working on. Uh, so we just kicked off environmental for that. And so it's still a couple of years out, but we'll be um, coming back with a complete rehab project of, of that stretch of about 18 miles to follow that one up to. Um, early, last month, we'd had the, our ribbon cutting for the Stay Route 46 uh, GLAP closure project, that final segment of Stair Out 46-4C. Um, there's still a little bit of punch list items out there with getting power out there, so we're waiting on PG&E for the flashing beacons. That's supposed to occur this month, but um, had a really good ribbon-cutting event uh, back in August, very well attended, so excited to see that project complete. The California Aqueduct on Stair Out 166. Um, this project was awarded back in August. There's about a nine-month delay start. Uh, while the contractor gets their permits from DWR. So we're anticipating that project to go to construction in May of uh, next year. Maricopa, the highway cap M out on State Route 166. So we had consecutive road closures, but the road closures are complete. Uh, so we hope to have that project complete by January of 2025. And Morning Drive Rehab Project this is on State Route 184 from Edison Highway to just north of Chase Avenue. So that, pr that project is in construction, progressing. We're about 60% complete. I expect to have that project wrapped up in the fall. With that, that completes my update. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. And uh, you mentioned CTC, and they will be in, in October. Bakersfield yeah. in October. Exciting. Um, yeah, we're excited about that. And the uh, eighth movement moving forward. Appreciate that. And Union Avenue, obviously, we've been waiting a long time long time who who is going to do that who's the contractor I, oh granite granite's granite? the contractor okay, yeah great. correct yeah i look forward to that i think there was another fatality just recently was there like okay. it's unfortunate yeah uh any comments other comments for I, Mr. i got a question sure hey michael um i know mcfarland was awarded for the community the the regional project do you have any updates on for september for the national the national, it was, let me see, yeah, it wasn't successful for the national, unfortunately. So you're giving the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't I thought it was all good news. No, I'm just No, kidding. yeah. No, thank you for the update. Yeah, fortunately. Next time. Yeah. Thank you, thank you chair. I just say Garza's circle looks great, too. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And I all think combined with all those, with the two Clean California projects, including Union Avenue, all the artwork, there's like 18 different murals will be going along that 204 corridor, yeah. uh, wrapping cabinets and, uh, and other items. So yeah, very nice. it is exciting. It's unfortunate Clean California is drying up, though. <laughs> Great. Is that it? Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, the California Transportation Commission met in San Diego on August 15th and 16th. We had a staff member there, Mr. Valle. On August 26th, I think Michael already mentioned this, but I want to thank um, all the current board members that attended. I think we had four. We actually had a former board member, a former executive director, um, and some many current and former employees, thank you all. That has been over a 25-year effort, believe it or not. And those of you that ha have not driven 46 recently between uh, here and the coast, it's completely different than it was uh, 15 years ago. Yeah. Safe, quick, no congestion. It's a pleasure, pleasure to drive. And the little piece that we have left in San Luis Obispo will be done in about uh, about a year. On October, uh, our chairman, you already mentioned this, October 17th and 18th, the 
CTC will be meeting here for the first time ever, having a full meeting in Bakersfield. I've talked to um, many of you about associated events, and I'll talk a little bit more about one of them that will happen on the 16th in a few minutes. Because of that CTC meeting, we will be dark next month. There will not be a uh, Kern Cog board meeting, but there will be uh, many activities that all of you um, are welcome to join us on. Over the past month, um, I've continued to meet about State Route 99 and 58. I don't think Michael mentioned this, but the City of Bakersfield award awarded a contract to Granite Construction to start work on the seventh movement, which is connecting eastbound 58 to northbound 99, building a brand new loop on ramp that includes a couple of bridges and many retaining walls. That work should be underway in rough, roughly a month. You'll see activity there. And the project will last about uh, a year to 18 months. I've continued to have discussions on 204 and Union Avenue. I did drive uh, uh, Garza Circle today. It looks great. I will uh, take a drive out to California Avenue tomorrow. Um, Seven Standard Road and State Route 43, the roundabout, which is a partnership between City of Shafter, County of Kern, City of Bakersfield, and um, a private company, wonderful company, is progressing. Thank you to City of Shafter is about ready to award the design contract, I believe, to Parsons. I know they'll. I know the people involved with that. They will do uh, a great job. They're the same uh, group that um, City of Bakersfield has selected to do work on the Eighth Movement. I'm very familiar with all the people who will be doing that work, and I'm confident they will do a, a good job and, more importantly, deliver on time. So we capture the funds we're trying to ca capture. Um, we've, after five plus years, we've, uh, we can take this off the list. We have uh, stopped our State Route 46 monthly meetings uh, because we finished. But there, there is still work to be done, especially in, in terms of billing and closing out all the earmarks. That work will continue, but I will not be giving any more updates on the construction through Lost Hills. Um, truck climbing lanes in District 9 continue to progress. District 6 is assisting in the delivery of that project, so thank you to both District 6 and District 9. And uh, as I mentioned to uh, a handful of you, there, is, there are also continuing meetings on State Route 119 for future planning of that corridor and also on what I call Stockdale Highway, which is uh, State Route 58. Subject to any of your quest questions, Mr. Chairman, uh, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we will adjourn that meeting and open the current Council of Governments meeting. Same roll call? We're good? The only difference is Skip Gorman from uh, Ridgecrest is on the line. Thank you. Public comments, uh, same, do we have any public comments? Seeing none, public comments for the consent agenda. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Any member wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Motion to approve consent. I'll second that. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Gorman. Um, yes. Becky, are you hearing I, ca I can't hear you, but I can barely hear you. Well, let me see if I can turn this. I, I, can, I can hear you some. Is it a yay or nay? Yay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Couch. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Crump. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. And Phil Smith. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Election of a vice chairman, Miss Napier.
get to that piece of paper. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Um, with the uh, Supervisor Scribner resigned from the Kern County Board of Supervisors effective August 2nd, 2024. In March of 2024, Mr. Scribner was elected vice chairman of Kern Cog, and it would now be appropriate to elect a new vice chairman um, for Kern Cog. And you may now take nominations for the position of vice chairman. Okay, here are any nominations. I'll Smith. nominate uh, uh, Supervisor David Couch. Thank you. Any other nominations? Seeing none. No Can pressure. No pressure. Roll call vote, please. Can we even get a second on that? <laughs> I second it. <laughs> Do you need a second on that? Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. It's a good legal opinion. You've got to be sure. more agreeable like that when we're at the county, Bill, not just here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a roll call? <laughs> yes. Okay, Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Crump. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Couch. Yes. Gorman. Yes. Okay. Yes, he said. Can I ask a question about that? Do we, I forgot, do we have a um, rotation at all with the chair and the vice chair and all that? Or is it just up to the board every year or two to choose how they want to do it? There's no, there's no rotation between Bakersfield, smaller cities, county, we don't do any of that. No, no formal, and we, we do take it up every year. Sometimes we are a month or two late. I own. Aye. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember you coming to me, but I'll say yes. Oh, did I, did I skip you? Well, you know, I marked you. <laughs> okay. <I'm good. laughs> Board appointment to the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of, of the board. The San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council is a 16-member board that consists of two elected officials from each of the eight regional transportation planning agencies in the San Joaquin Valley. The Policy Council was established in 2006 to provide a forum for the valley to communicate discuss and collaborate on issues that impact the entire region, such as transportation, air quality, and advocacy efforts. The Policy Council works regionally to build consensus on items that, when implemented by individual regional planning agency, results in a single vision for the entire San Joaquin Valley. The last time the members were appointed to the Policy Council was in January of 2019, and those members are no longer on the Kern Cog Board. Um, staff is recommending that you make three appointments to the San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council. Uh, that would be two members and one alternate. Thank you. Uh, I'll run this different. Do I have any volunteers to be on the Policy Council? I'll put my name in the hat. Thank you, Mayor Ion. Any other volunteers? I have, a, I have a question about it. Sir. Maybe you just said it. Where, where do we, where are the trips, Sacramento and D.C.? Yes. One per year to each place? Yes. Are they both around? Do you know that maybe you've already said this. What times of the year do you do that? Or is, does it vary? The, the uh, one to Washington, D.C. is in September, typically early September. And the one to um, Sacramento is in March. I'd be willing to do it. You, are okay. you, you're, who's on it now? You? Kathy? Myself. Yeah. And, uh, and script. Yeah, let, let me explain that a little bit. The, they have been acting as the policy council because they were on the REAP committee that was formed, that was formed by uh, the city selection committee primarily. Um, Bob was the, the large city member, Kathy was a small city member, and then Zach was appointed by the board of supervisors. <coughs> but it's all the same people, so we just basically 
had them sit as the policy council as well. So does the Board of Supervisors need to nominate one of No. no? The, re the REAP committee that, that they were appointed to is, it's, it's going away December 31st. So it, it will no longer be a committee. Okay, I have two volunteers. Any others? If not, I'll volunteer as the alternate, I guess. Okay. Does somebody. If you wanted to do it full time, you might keep the first. You've been there for a while. It's up to you. Do you think we need a motion or anything? I don't think it matters. We okay. can all show yes. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, the attorney says we need a motion and a second and a roll call vote. Can I have a motion? motion. Second. <laughs> was motion and a second? I've Gilberto, heard. Gilberto, was that you that seconded? No, somebody else. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Roll call vote. I feel like I'm shuffling papers tonight. <laughs> I own. Aye. Gorman. Aye. Oh, thank you. Couch. Becky, I'm holding up yes. my right arm whenever I mean yes. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Couch. Oh, yes. Crichton. Yes. Crump. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Thank you very much. Very good. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Just have a couple of quick items. Speaking of um, going to Washington, D.C., I was there um, most of last week. Um, arrived Sunday and stayed, came back on uh, Thursday. Um, part of that trip, um, we had group meetings with um, all of our current elected officials and other elected officials at the federal level uh, up and down the valley. Um, it was nice um, nice to see Jim Costa, who used to represent us in the state legislature. Also attended an ice cream social that was hosted by uh, Tulare Council of Governments, and it was hosted by um, Congressman Fong, Valadeo, and, and uh, Jim Costa. I also had one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, Congressman Fong, Valadeo, and Obernolte, uh, and I met not one-on-one, -on -one, but, but in smaller groups, uh, Senator Butler and Senator Padilla for the first time. It was a productive trip, and uh, I want, wanted to remind everyone, I've told a few of you, but last year I had a, about a five-minute conversation with Congressman Obernolte, um, and it resulted in a $2 million earmark this year. So sometimes uh, it doesn't seem like these trips are productive or worthwhile, but when we can score two $2 million earmark, it makes you want to go back. <laughs> uh, on October 16th, um, and, th and this is um, directed to each of you um, board members, in conjunction with the CTC meeting, there will be a uh, rail tour of the Tehachapi Loop. And we'll be taking an antique... Uh, viewing car that is being provided by BNSF. We will leave Bak the Bakersfield Amtrak station at, uh, what time was it? 11, 11.30 a.m. It'll be a, approximately four to five hours. Each each one of the board, Kern Cog board members has only one seat this time. Sorry, the, the train has filled up very quickly. Please uh, let me, Becky, or Suzanne know if you will be attending. And if you if you cannot attend, I'm sorry, I, I won't be able to take substitutions. That's how short we are. We, I have roughly 20 people on a waiting list already. So please let me know if you'd like to attend. Um, some of you have done it before. It is sort of a, a once in a lifetime opportunity, I think. Um, uh, Phil, you have, you've done it before, have, haven't you? You want to talk about what, what you got to see? Well, it's uh, an incredible experience because you do uh, get to traverse one of the seventh or one of the engineering wonders of the world, you know, the Tatchby Loop. 
and you'll also see uh, some of the improvements along the, the right of way for the rail where they have double tracked because they have so, so much traffic and then they, uh, they double track in areas where the very lengthy trains can pass each other. So uh, otherwise the single track in certain areas, so you, they'll get to see all that. And, but it's a, it's a historic thing. I got to do it when I was a kid from Tehachapi. My dad was a signalman for the Southern Pacific Railroad. We used his, his car to get on the train, the passenger train, and come to Bakersfield. And I remember going up to Snyder's bicycle shop. We'd stop at the depot in, in Bakersfield. We went and <laughs> I think I got my first bicycle there. And we went back home in that afternoon. It was kind of cool. But as an adult, it's, a, it's an impressive trip if you can, if you can make it. Yeah. Even even if you're not into trains, I encourage encourage you to go. And just to give you an idea of what what is going to happen, both uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe and Union Pacific will be represented on the train. They will be making presentations, talking about uh, how much it costs to maintain that track, the value to the um, county, to the uh, state, and to the nation. And they, they will be, just like I will be, advocating for more investment in not just in the rail, but in the highways. I'll be making a presentation. And we will have uh, at least eight or nine CTC commissioners who yearly allocate billions of dollars. So the, the main purpose of bringing the CTC to Bakersfield, having this trip and other activities, is to um, attract more investment into our, our roadways and our bikeways and all, all the facilities and our railroad facilities. There will also be a lunch served on the train right after we board. About 45 minutes later, we'll start climbing up the hill. Can I get the date on that again, please? It is October 16th, boarding time, 11.30 a.m. Yes, uh, I'd like to comment on it, too, because I was on the last time when we went through, and what was exciting, too, is the fact that there were so many people that had gotten to places along the way that were taking pictures of us because it's very unusual to have anybody up there, and we were taking pictures of them because they were watching us as we mm -hmm. went through. So it, it does have a strong historical as well as a wonder. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's it's not uh, like an Amtrak train. It no. is truly an antique uh, antique passenger tr uh, car it won't be pulled by an antique locomotive, but the cars are at least 50, if not yeah. 60 or 70 years old. But well, they're the perfectly yeah, safe, though. The history of the cars, but also because <laughs> of you know the location and all, it's it's really pretty exciting. You won't forget it. Oh, and I will add in, in advance: uh, City of Bakersfield will be providing uh, security for boarding because it is so unique. It, Last time it attracted a lot more attention than I wanted it to, to attract. So, um, and um, hmm. if you don't have a ticket or aren't signed up in advance, you, you can't just show up and and expect to get on board. And that's at the Amtrak station, correct? Okay. Correct. Um, with that, I just have a few items in your folder this evening, Mr. Chairman. Timeline co covering September, October, November, and December. Rideshare Week flyer is October 7th to 11th. Spe speaking of Snyder Cyclery, they're a sponsor. Uh, the Kern Cog Report of Projects of Regional si Significance, the September edition. Oh, I've sent, sent this out to a handful of you. Let me get my glasses. So I talk about um, several times a year, and this time of the year, always bring it up. This year, I'm proud to announce that um, as of August 31st, which is just about three weeks ago, Kern, Kern Cog has delivered 195.5% um, of our federal dollars that were allocated. And I've talked bef many times before about how we deliver more than um, we're, we're authorized. We take money from other areas in the state and other areas in the country which is a, a strategy that, because we, we don't have many sources of funds to draw from, that it's how we deliver, how, how we uh, punch above our weight, so to, so to speak. Second in the state, 
hopefully we'll be in the first place by, by uh, next year. But you can, if you have time, take a look at some of the other counties and regions in the area. Some of them are down there at 35 percent, 40 percent, and we're we're taking their their money. So great news, great news, uh, and a great job by staff and all of your uh, staff members. And a big part of this uh, 195 percent uh, delivery rate is we were able to cap capture six million dollars for one single project in the city of Bakersfield, connecting 58 and 99 using this August redistribution process. So we've talked about it for years. That's our biggest uh, capture, so to speak, ever. So great news. And then finally, the um, Bike Bakersfield, September 2024, October and November community rides flyers. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? I'll just say thank you, Aaron, for uh, all the work organizing the CTC. Uh, I know you've really pushed it and made it all happen, and, and it, it will be a great visit for them, and hopefully uh, we'll see reason to invest in the region. Well, well I appreciate that, but it, it has been uh, Ms. Napier, her staff, and many others who I know and I don't, I've done maybe 1% of the work, and I've gotten gray hairs over it and lost hair. <laughs> and, and they're doing 99% of the work. Uh, but others are starting to help. Um, City of Bakersfield has recently offered uh, some assistance. Thank you to Tehachapi for putting up a financial contribution, Bakersfield also. But it is a tremendous amount of work. But as I've mentioned to some of you, our goal is to capture about at least forty million dollars, so it's worth the effort. Don't forget Rob and Ben. Rob, Rob and Ben, especially Ben was in charge of, and he's been working on this for over a year. The train tour, and those of you that have projects that involve the railroad know, you know, they never call you back, never return <laughs> emails, uh, but um, they they want money too. So mm -hmm. it's all it's all coming together, and uh, it'll be. Great. I encourage all of you, even if you can't make the train ride or can't make the, uh, the, the reception, just to stop by, see how they operate. It's the first time ever they've been in Bakersfield to see some of you I've invited to other CTC meetings. Uh, this, this is how transportation projects get funded in, Cal in California. Catherine ha has her hand up. I have a, a question. Do you know what time the train's going to come by the Tehachapi Loop at? Any idea? I, I believe they're bringing in the train all the way from, uh, you're saying when they, they will likely come in the day before that. Or when uh, it'll pass through oh, the Tehachapi Loop. Oh, oh, Sorry. So it'll pass through the, the loop to get here. There won't be, there'll be some people on board. I can't guarantee you what time, but when we're all on it, it will will probably leave at 11:30, say 12:15, roughly an hour and 45 minutes later. But for those of you who've been on the tour, the the schedule is not uh, don't don't count on exact times because uh, they both the railroads, Union Pacific, are in business to make money. So if they have a uh, a long freight train that needs to pass, we need to move over, and they need to pass. So la last time we were delayed by uh, a couple of hours, I believe. Did you have a pr published uh, schedule for the, the two-day event? No, the, the, the schedule will be released by the CTC about um, 10 or 11 days before the, the meeting typically. I will uh, contact you individually for some of the individual events. The, um, the train ride will not be on the uh, agenda. Um, there will be a dinner that a, a small group of you will attend. There will also be, a, uh, oh, I forgot to mention this. There, there will also be an aerial tour. I want to thank, publicly thank, County of Kern, who's providing three helicopters, one from fire department, two from the sheriff department. Thank you, 
Supervisor Couch for coordinating this. There'll be um, a small group of, of board members. I only have 13 total seats on the helicopters, so I apologize in advance. All of you, all of you, there just isn't enough room, but we'll be taking. <laughs> there was an, another helicopter due in, but the fire chief told me it won't be delivered in time. He was looking forward to using their brand new helicopter. So thank you to the County of Kern all the events that are associated won't be on the agenda. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. And uh, also to uh, Mayor Ione, we're going to have a little separate event there celebrating McFarland, and he's bringing um, Coach Jim White down for a little ceremony before the train boarding. Thank you for that. I know you've, you've met the uh, chairman. He will appreciate it. And again, our goal is to get money for for projects in Kern. Thank you. Any other comments? Any member statements? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>